Hi, this is Mike, and welcome to BitFixer. Today we're looking at the PetPix, which is a way to display video on your Commodore PET. Right now we're looking at a Commodore PET 2001 with a 40 by 25 text display, and it's displaying uh, video at about 30 frames per second. This is something I've been messing around with for a few years at this point. I've shown it at BCF, or Vintage Computer Festival East and West in the past, and uh, decided to bring it back for BCF West 2022, August 6th and 7th in Mountain View, California. So if you want to come to BCF West, you can see this live and I'll be there to demonstrate it for you. Let's take a look at how it works. First, I wanted to take a moment to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. PCBWay is a one-stop shop for your next project. They can do PCB assembly, PCB fabrication in a number of colors, CNC machining, injection molding, 3D printing, and sheet metal fabrication. New members get a $5 coupon which can be used on your first order. So for your next project, check out PCBWay.com. So how does video on a Commodore PET actually work? Well, we want to go from a live video feed or a pre-recorded video feed, but here we have it on a mobile phone. And then we want to be able to draw a reasonable facsimile of that uh, image onto the PET screen. So the PET itself is not capable of uh, bitmap graphics, or at least the CPU is not able to turn on and off individual pixels in its, uh, in its video display, at least not without modification. But what you can do is you can write values into these two chips right here, and what happens is the CPU can write bytes into that section of RAM. Those serve as offsets to the character ROM inside the PET, and then within that character ROM are actually 8-pixel uh, by 8-pixel images of every character the pet can display. Those characters look like this. So essentially you have 128 uh, unique shapes that you can draw as well as their inverse. So you flip black and white. But what we're doing basically is taking every image, in this case it's, it's going to be a 320 by 200 uh, color image, and we break that up into 8 pixel by 8 pixel sub images. And for every sub image we try to figure out which uh, Petsky character is the closest match for what we see on our camera. And I'm going to show you the way that we choose those characters that we display and different methods that are possible to do so. And you can let me know in the comments which method you think is best and uh, let's take a look. So here's a video we might want to view on the pet. It's the pet itself along with a couple of its friends. Something simple we could try would be to split up every image coming in from the video into 8x8 sub-images. And for each of those, I try to just directly match the brightness of that region with the brightness of every corresponding Petsky character. And when I say brightness, I just mean add up the pixel values of every single pixel in the region and try to get the one with the closest match. And this is what you get when you do that form of matching. It uh, is fairly noisy and you don't get a good sense of the shapes that you're seeing. You do see some amount of uh, balance between light and dark, but it's overall kind of a noisy result. So something else we can try is what I'm calling direct pixel comparison. So that means for every pixel in that 8x8 region, you subtract from the uh, corresponding pixel in every Petsky character, and then the one that has the minimum error, you choose that as the match. And as you can see, that matches shapes pretty well, but it looks basically like a black and white thresholding. You don't see a lot of detail in the mid-range tones, just the black and white. Now, the next thing is kind of a hybrid method. I take the pixel matching, but I limit it to Petsky characters that are within a certain range of brightness. So I've combined the first two methods. And this one, for example, I am limiting the Petsky characters I check for within a certain range of brightness from the sub-image. And doing this we get some additional detail which we didn't see in that black and white thresholding method. And also it's not as noisy as the brightness only matching. And the last of the methods we'll look at for how to match your uh, image to Petsky is called the D DCT or discrete cosine transform. And the way that works is you take your pixels, which are pixels at a brightness at a certain location in space, and you can actually transform that into a collection of spatial frequencies. And the idea with the discrete cosine transform is you can go back and forth between the space domain and the frequency domain. So uh, basically any image can be uh, represented as the set of spatial frequencies. And then when you add them back together, you get your image again. 
Uh, this is important because it's the basis of image compression, like JPEG, and it's also very good for image matching. And essentially what you do is, instead of just subtracting the images, like we're doing with the uh, pixel matching, you're actually finding the minimum error between the frequency signatures of that sub-image and the frequency signature of an individual pesky character. Let's see what it looks like when you do that. And this is the DCT matching method applied to the same video. You can see there's an interesting property on what characters it selects for the mid-range tones on the grays. Uh, no longer just directly thresholding between white and black, but you actually capture some texture in the middle. And it does have a different look from the hybrid brightness and pixel matching method, which we tried before. Now let's look at a couple of these methods side by side. I've removed the method using brightness only because I didn't think the matches it came up with were very good. And I also removed the method using pixel comparison only for the same reason. It just generates a black and white image. And here are the methods we're going to be comparing. In the upper right is something I'm calling pixel A, which is direct pixel comparison along with a restriction in the range of brightness values. The pixel A is a narrow range and the lower left method of calling pixel B is the same thing except with a slightly wider range of brightness values allowed. And in the lower right finally is the DCT matching method. So take a look at these and let me know in the comments which you think gives the best match for uh, converting video to Petsky characters. Take a look at these methods on some public domain stock footage. I found that in some cases it looks like the uh, pixel matching method might capture some of the features of a face a little better, even though the DCT seems to capture some of the shading more accurately. And here are some vehicles going around. Let me know which taxi cab you think looks best. And here's a Ferris wheel at night. It looks like the uh, Pixel A method might be capturing a little bit more of the uh, lighting than Pixel B. And then finally here's a double-decker bus in London. I kind of like this one because, as you can see on the underground sign, it just happened to be lined up well enough that it actually matched an N character there for the N in the sign. So which of those matching techniques is the best? The advantage of the uh, pixel matching technique where you just directly compare pixels is it's fast and you don't have to uh, spend a lot of CPU power calculating, uh, calculating anything and you can match pretty quickly. The DCT gives you some improved results on the mid-range mid tones but it takes, uh, takes more effort on your, uh, on your processor and it, uh, it's a little bit slower. So uh, what I'm doing right now is for the mobile capture I'm using the the pixel compare method, which I think is uh, gives a good result for faces and uh, anything else where you want to get uh, some strong details. And I'm using, basically for a pre-recorded video, I'm using whichever one seems to look better. So I convert it twice and I see which one uh, seems to look better. And in some cases where you have, uh, where you want to capture those mid-tones, I use the DCT and otherwise I might use the pixel match. So. Um, but they're both available, and uh, if you want to check out the repository, the link is in the description, and you can give it a try for yourself. On the hardware side, this wiring mess you see here is my prototype of the PetPix device. Uh, here we have a edge connector going to the user port on the PET. Now the user port has eight bits of data that you can uh, interface, as well as two handshaking lines that you can use with an external device to signal when a new byte is available. And uh, on this side is a Raspberry Pi. I'm using some leftover boards I have for other projects to simplify the wiring here. But uh, Raspberry Pi uh, GPIO inputs are not 5 volt tolerant and the user port uh, IO is 5 volts. So I have a 74 LS or actually 74 LVC 245 sitting between them. That is the version of the 245 buffer, which is it powered from 3.3 volts, but is five volt tolerant. So you can use that for easy interfacing of 3.3 volt and five volt devices. And uh, the two handshaking lines between them, the uh, there's two lines called CA1 and CB2. And the CA1 is an input. So that one I'm actually 
connecting directly from the Raspberry Pi to the user port. Um, I think it's safe <laughs> because it's only in, it's only uh, outputting from the Raspberry Pi and hasn't broken yet, so it should be okay. And the CB2 is an output. It's actually bidirectional, but I'm using it as an output. CB2 is what the PET uses to signal that it's read a byte. And uh, that I'm just running through a little voltage divider here, so it's safe for the Raspberry Pi to be connected to it. Well, fortunately, right in time for the uh, video, this arrived. I made a PCB for the uh, PET PETPIX the connection between the uh, Raspberry Pi and the PET, and this board. I'll make this board available on my website and also the uh, the KiCad project files. KiCad or KiCad? I've heard people say both, but I say KiCad. But uh, the project files are available in the repository linked in the description, and you can make your own of these if you like. On the software side, we have something that runs on the PET itself, and we have something that runs on the Raspberry Pi. What you're looking at here is the program that runs on the PET. This is basically reading as quickly as possible from the user port and then writing the bytes into video memory in a big unrolled loop for speed. On the Raspberry Pi we have one program which converts images to Petsky characters and then we have another which reads frames from a file or a network socket and writes to the Commodore user port. And this is all on the GitHub repository if you want to take a look or try it for yourself. So let's take a look at some live and recorded videos playing on the pet picks. And here I'm playing one of my other videos, so you can see how that looks. And let's take a look at some of those other videos we converted earlier and see how those look on the pet screen itself. And here's an example of live video capture. Uh, I have a web page that's hosted on the Raspberry Pi and it's using the uh, mobile phone's camera to capture frames and then it does the conversion to Petski on the phone itself in JavaScript. I have a few sliders here so you can adjust things like how much the red, green, blue values you want to add uh, to experiment with, um, as well as the range that we talked about. That's for the pixel matching. And it's pretty, uh, response is pretty good. A few milliseconds of delay probably. And uh, yeah, so you can capture from the rear facing or front facing camera. There you go. And yeah, so live video live video capture from a mobile phone to the PET. Here you can see you can run this on a PET 8032 as well in 80 column mode. And the buzzing sound you hear is because on the 8032 that CB2 line, I believe it is, is also tied to the internal speaker. So uh, there is a way to disable that, which I will have to do before displaying it. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, feel free to leave a comment. Let me know what type of matching you think looks the best. And uh, give the video a like or subscribe to the channel. Um, this uh, PetPix also works with the C64, which I'm not showing here, but uh, I'll come back in a future video and show you how that works. It looks a little bit different because it's no longer uh, text. Um, and yeah, thanks very much. I'll leave you here with one last video in Petsky format, and uh, we'll guarantee that if you come to see this exhibit at BCF West, it will not let you down. Oh.